Someday they can call this fight Pickett's Charge. All we knew was that this battle's been one of the worst we'd ever been in. Only a few of us have made it to this spot inside the Yankee line. If we could lick him now, he could break these cussed Yanks and just maybe this war would finally be over. As I looked around at so many of my friends dying, I realized how much things had changed for our army in less than a month. Only a few weeks before, we'd marched into the state of Pennsylvania like we owned it. That's because we'd been whipping Yankees in every battle we'd fought for the last six months. We all just knew we could do it again. I tell you what, boy, you just stick with me, and we'll whip them Federals good. I tell you, at Fredericksburg, I chased a dozen of them into the Rappahannock. I did, didn't I? Didn't I? I did, man, I got them all. Don't you worry, you stick right next to me, we'll get you home to mama. We were proud to be marching right into the Yankees' backyard. There was another big fight going on up the road, and we were headed right for it. On the last day of June, our boys found the Yanks outside of a little town listed on the maps as Gettysburg. Both the armies quickly brought up more men, just like that, the greatest battle of the war was underway. For two days, our boys given the Federals all they could handle. But we'd been cut up pretty bad, too. We all knew the next day's fight would decide this god-awful battle. The Yanks must have been thinking the same thing. Our Army of the Potomac had endured some 20,000 casualties in the last two days. That evening, I arrived with my boss, General John Gibbon, at a war council called by our commander to decide what the Army would do. Gentlemen. Hot out there, huh? Pretty hot. But at least we gave as good as we got today. For two hours, the generals deliberated. Their vote was unanimous. The Army of the Potomac would halt right here and allow the rebel army to come up and smash its head against it. If the Union generals were ready to be attacked, old Bobby Lee was happy to oblige. Tomorrow, he was going to throw 12,000 of our men against the Yanks waiting on a low rise called Cemetery Ridge. So there I was. I come out of the woods, and what do I see trotting down the road right towards me? A Yankee officer on his horse, like he owned the place. General Lee's plan was a bold one, but it was awful dangerous. Our boys would have to march almost a mile, taking heavy artillery fire nearly every step of the way. I won't be taken prisoner by no private. I said, sir. Unless you can promote me, you ain't got no choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see y'all in the morning, boys. Good night. If we should fail, it could mean complete defeat for this army. The odds were against us. But General Lee believed we could do it. We'd done the impossible before. Now the Confederacy needed us to do it again. The Gettysburg battlefield awakened to a day that promised to be hot with little breeze. The fight that was coming today was going to be a big one. Each of us knew it might be our last. But a little fun always helped calm our nerves. The whole morning was spent arranging over 140 cannon. When the command was given, the guns would cut loose with a 
biggest artillery barrage anyone had seen in this entire war. As morning became early afternoon, we were called into position. Oh! Oh! Dress up your line, boys! Stay down! As soon as the cannons finished pounding the Federal line, we'd be given the order to attack. Somewhere on the other side were a whole bunch of Yankees. I wondered if they were as nervous as we were. White fleecy clouds floated overhead. We dozed in the heat. A great lull rests upon the field. I looked at my watch and thought possibly I might go to sleep. It was five minutes before one o'clock. signal shot was fired far to our right. Instantly, every battery on the Confederate line opened on its mission of death and destruction. The third and last day of the Battle of Gettysburg was on. never seen anything like this barrage. Most of our guns have been ordered to hold their fire for the infantry attack we all knew would soon follow. But as rebel shells slammed into our troops, General Hancock demanded action. General Hancock, sir! Why the hell aren't these guns firing? I have orders from General Hunt to wait. My men need some help. I'm ordering you to start returning that fire. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Not ready. It's firing. Fire. Our boys who had the feel of terror being shot. The sun that had been so brilliant only a moment before was now darkened with smoke. The earth trembles beneath us as if shaken by an earthquake. Men prayed on that field that had never prayed before. Our gunners kept up the barrage, but heavy smoke hid the Yankee line. We didn't know it at the time, but instead of taking out the cannon and riflemen on the Union front line, most of our shells were falling to the rear. Behind the crest of the hill, the rebel fire was dead. But in the front line, many of our men actually fell asleep as the shells passed over their heads. After almost two hours, the awful cannonade ended. Over 11,000 rounds had been fired. We would later learn that the roar of the cannon had been heard over a hundred miles away. In a few spots, the rebel barrage had done its job. But on the flanks, where our guns would be the most deadly, not a single one of our cannon had been put out of commission. Gun number one! Get up, boys! They're taking battery! Load for Titan Shell, 1,500 yards! Attack.
time had arrived. The enemy was waiting. Oh Christ, hear us. Oh Christ, hear us. Lord have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Each of us prepared to face death in his own way. You any further instructions, General? No, Dick, I don't. Unless to advise you to make the best kind of time in crossing that valley. It's a hell of an ugly place over yonder. And those Yankees will take fiendish delight in making your life miserable. I'm sure they will, General. Hit them hard. Keep your boys going, and by God, don't let them stop till they take that wall. Good luck, old friend. And to you, General. Fall in, boys! Put your hands! Remember what you are fighting for. Remember your wives, your mothers, your sisters, and your sweethearts. Gentlemen, run! Jonas, up! Your mission awaits, and the hopes and dreams of your countrymen go with you. I know you shall not fail, for you are armed with a special weapon. You represent the greatest state God ever created. Up, my glorious man, and to your posts. Do your duty, and don't forget today that you are from old Virginia. Here they come, boys! Overwhelming, restless tide of armed men was sweeping upon us. The gray line spread across more than a thousand yards.
your fire. We're ready for them. Our rifles had still not been heard from. The commanders had urged our men to wait. But now, the time was fast approaching. The men knew what was coming. They prepared to act. Now, a hundred yards, no more, divide us. Given. Tell him we need reinforcements on this line. Go! Many of our cannon fell silent as brave friends and comrades dropped next to their guns. Rorty went down. Woodruff was killed. And Cushing, firing almost his last canister, dropped dead. breaking from the cover of the wall and with no one to check them was falling back in a flock of confusion. Back to your post! Hold the line! Turn and fire! Turn and fire! Back! Back! The men soon regained confidence in themselves and sent back into the enemy a fierce storm of fire. One brief instant, we dared to hope. Here was the crack in the line. If only we could break it wide open. The Yankees quickly surged in to fill the break. We desperately looked for reinforcements. We looked back prayed for support, but it wasn't coming, and we knew the Battle of Gettysburg was over. I suddenly realized 
No one was coming to help us. Those of us who were still alive had a choice. Surrender, die, or retreat. Our fight was finished. For about 100 yards, I broke the lightning speed record. Suddenly, I realized I was a good target for those yelling Yankees, and having a horror of being shot in the back, I faced about and backed out of range. The charge had taken only about 30 minutes. But now, God help us, each of us who survived would live with the memory of this attack for a lifetime. General Lee was waiting for us as we came back from the attack. Some of the men tried to cheer him. Others said they were sorry they had failed the old man. But he told them, it's all my fault. This, the blame is mine. This was all my fault. This was if it had been his fault, we never loved him more than at that moment. The day after the battle was the 4th of July, but no one on either side was celebrating. As if to wash all the blood from the fields, the skies opened and it rained all day. Our army had lost over 5,500 men in the charge. Over half of those who had set out across the field. General Lee sent the ambulance train first, since it would need the most time. That sad train of broken men would stretch for over 19 miles. It would take over a week before it and the rest of our wounded army at last returned home to Virginia. I was one of the lucky ones. I had survived. But now I would have to do battle with the haunted memories I would take in this place. The rain would at last end and the battle would become part of history. But it would be 21 long months before this horrible war would finally be over and the nation could begin to put itself back together. The brave men who had fought for the Confederacy would have to content themselves with the sad fact that they had given their all for a lost cause. Those of us who had struggled for the North would eventually return home knowing that we had never fought harder to restore the Union and end slavery than on that terrible final day at the Battle of Gettysburg. We cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.